how fresh and new the eyeliner is. If it's brand new, you'll need to add a little bit more to break it up. And then you're going to mix the activator into the eyeliner to create about a shoe polish paste. And the way you can tell whether it's ready is just to tap it on your hand. And if it runs, that's too liquidy. So if it runs, you need to add a little bit more eyeliner and test it until you get the right consistency. So this is what it should look like on your hand. You can see how it's thick, it's opaque, and it's not feathering out. And here's a closer look. Just right inside the lash bed. So I come from the tradition of Laura Mercier. That's who trained me originally. And so I love everything to have a good primer. I think primer is critical for keeping shadow on. Sometimes people like to just throw a little bit of powder shadow on their lid and then they wonder later why it didn't last or why it creased. The reason why it did not last and why it creased is because you need to use an eyeshadow primer or in this instance, eyeshadow basics by Laura Mercier. And the color we're gonna to use today is wheat. So there is a cream shadow brush you can use if you're really meticulous and you like to use lots of different brushes for each different step. For me, I like to just use my finger. I think it's easier um, and this would be the brush if you're not going to get one, I would say you can just leave it at the store. So just take a little bit, you can put it on your ring finger like this and you're gonna apply directly to your lid. Just tap, tap, tapping like that. And I like to take it all the way up to my brow bone it acts as a primer and also as a lid concealer. So if you have darker lids that are fighting with the color that you're putting on your lid, this will help mitigate some of that darkness and allow you to really see the color that you're using for your shadow. Now I'm going to add a cream shadow and this one has a little bit of shimmer to it. The reason why I'm going to use this is because I like all of my other shadows to be incredibly malleable when I'm working them into the crease or just around the eye and cream shadow helps do that. So the shadow today we're going to use is a platinum shadow by Laura Mercier. I like this, it's really fresh for spring. And what you're gonna do again is just put it on your ring finger and tap, tap, tap on the lid. And you can see that adds 
a little bit of light reflection and makes the eye look a little bit brighter. All right, this brush you do need. It's called a ponytail brush. Every person should have one. You should go out and buy one right now. Actually, you can just get it on my website with my product listing. This is my favorite brush in the whole wide world because it's just amazing and you'll understand once you have one. So today the palette we're going to be working with is the Azure palette. It's by Trish McAvoy. It has a lot of great colors in it for spring. And at this point when you're doing eye makeup, what you wanna do is go ahead and add a little bit of a dark shadow inside the crease. Now, there's two dark eyeshadows here, and they look a little scary if you're not used to wearing eyeshadow, but I promise you they're actually quite tame. And any of these shadows, you can blend or mix with each other to lighten the hue of the color. So for today, since we're looking for a spring look that's moving into summer, I'm going to go ahead and use the brown shadow, and I'm going to mix in a little bit of this lighter color just to temper the brown shadow and not make it too dark. So what you're going to do once you have your colors blended is you can look in your eye just like this and you can see that you have a little crease right there and you're going to take your ponytail brush and tap it right inside your crease and what I say is that you just want to move back and forth like a little windshield wiper just like that and you can use your fingers because we put the platinum shadow on there to sort of blend it in. All right, so I call the crease color sort of like salt when you're cooking, add to taste, okay? So if you're just getting started with makeup and this is your first go at doing a couple of complex things, then don't overdo it and freak yourself out. Just try a little bit of salt, and then as you progress and you feel more comfortable with it, you can really smoke it up a little bit. So after you've put the crease color in, what I like to do is just check the level and make sure I'm still getting a good variation between the lid and the crease and the brow bone. That there is some distinction between those. And if you feel like your crease color has snuck its way down and it's looking too dark and kind of mishmashy, I'll go back with my platinum shadow, or in this palette we have this light color, and I'll just tap a little bit on the lid to help brighten it back up so it's not too heavy, since this is a spring look, not a winter evening. So we have our smudging materials. That includes a smudge brush, okay? Smudge brushes are great. They have compact bristles like this, which allow you to really work into it. And then I use a cream shadow. Again, you can use the cream shadow you've already used. And then what we'll do is we'll take our dark shadow and our palette, and we'll blend the dark shadow with the cream shadow. That'll allow the shadow to be really workable and easy to maneuver. So we've got our smudge brush and we have our metallic cream shadow, and we have our dark shadow. And you're gonna take a little bit of that and mix it into the dark shadow, just like that. And you can see, as we work it into our hand, that it becomes really malleable and easy to maneuver. And you can really, again, it's like salt, add to taste. If you want it to be darker, just add a little bit more shadow. All right, so we're gonna take our smudgy color and I'm gonna work it just right along the lash bed on top. And if you wanna add a little bit of intensity, you can move it into the crease just like that using your ring finger to really make it all blend together. So you can see the difference. So now we're gonna do a little bit of under eyeliner, and the way I like to do my under eyeliner is to keep it really subtle, like it's just a shadow. You know that eyeliner when you sleep and you wake up the next morning and you've got those sort of bedroom eyes, and you're like, oh, I should my eyeliner look like this all the time. That's the kind of eyeliner I like to go for right off the bat. So the way you get that is by mixing what's left on your eyeliner brush with your cream shadow and smudgy color on your hand. You can add a little bit more if you need to and that'll create a nice little shadow for yourself. And you can take that and just tap, tap, again, under the eye, staying as close as you can to where your lashes originate. 
this sort of thing. And I don't go the whole realm, I just kind of go about halfway through. So the very last thing I like to do before I put mascara on is just go back over the top and add a little bit extra eyeliner. Now you don't have to do this, again, this is just me and my perfectionism about makeup, liking things to all look perfectly tied together. So what I like to do is just sort of tap, 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 again, just at the top to create a really good dark line. shadow but we're going to wait to do a tutorial for that so our next step is going to be to curl your eyelashes this is so important Please go buy yourself an eyelash curler you'll be so much happier when you do and what you're gonna do is just go in and curl your lashes give it about a three second hold on either side and then for this particular look, I'm going to use the High Volume Jet Black Mascara from Trish McAvoy. I love this mascara because it comes off like fake eyelashes. It doesn't smudge, it doesn't run down your face or anything like that. You literally wet it, rub, and pull, and it'll come just right off. So you're gonna just add a little bit of, it, a little bit of mascara. These are your happy concealer products. This is Luminizer by Trish McAvoy, Secret Camouflage by Laura Mercier, and a Secret Concealer Brush. I love this brush because it really applies things very smoothly and softly and really allows for good detailing. So you're gonna take your Luminizer pen and you're gonna go just where things look dark. And I say that because white is a maximizing color, so you don't want to put white on things that are puffy or stick out. And that's literally what it's going to look like. If you have a crease, you're just going to stick it right inside the crease. And then you're going to take your ring finger and just pat, 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 gently. Everywhere where you want the luminizer to be. And that allows for a light reflection. So this is what we look like with just luminizer on, and as you can tell, it really brightens up under your eye and keeps that heavy darkness from reflecting up on your eye and making your eyes look too heavy or dark. Now, technically, Secret Camouflage is used just for the face because it's a little bit thicker consistency than, say, an under eye concealer. I actually like the consistency because I find that it doesn't crease as much, but if you like something that's a little bit creamier, you can mix your secret camouflage in with your foundation to allow for a little bit more hydration. And you're going to take the two colors and just kind of mix to match with your skin tone. And again, just put your concealer, feather it on where you have dark spots. And I start just in the darkness because once you've covered the dark, you might notice that you don't need to slather on concealer everywhere. And then sometimes I'll just go in very, very slightly and touch up right underneath my eye just to keep it really tidy. All right, so now that we've done our eyes and we have our under eye concealer on, we can tell that we need a little bit more blush because right now our face is still looking a little too neutral. So what I do now is go in and add whichever blush I want on top of this. If I'm looking at my eyes and I'm thinking, oh, they're a little bit cool, I want to warm it up, or I'm thinking, mm, I like a little bit more pink and a little less coral, then you can grab whichever blush you're feeling that day. For me, I'm loving Nude Pink by Bobbi Brown. I think it's a great mixture and combines really well with Fresh Melon. And I also like my Angle Brush by Trish McAvoy. I think it applies things very smoothly. So we're gonna take a little bit of our blush and just tap, tap, tap again, right on the cheeks, just kind of moving up, just like that. And that'll add a little pop of color to your cheek, make you look really fresh. All right, everybody's so excited about orange lipstick for spring. I 
can't wear orange lipstick. So my alternative is to go a little bit more nude in the orange peachy category to keep my skin looking fresh, to allow me to wear a little bit darker eyes, but still look appropriate for daytime. So the color I'm really loving right now is Barely Peach. It's by Trish McAvoy. And then I pop a little bit of a high shimmer gloss and rosé from Bobbi Brown over that. And literally, just kind of scooch it on your lips slightly. Like a good rub-in. And you can see that's kind of got that orange hue but it's a little bit chalky. So, the high volume lip gloss, or the, excuse me, the high shimmer lip gloss, will just help smooth that out. Easy peasy. All right, very last thing we're going to do is add a little bit of bronzer. And my favorite brush for doing transitional bronzer, as I call it, because we're not full on bronzer, just a slight hint of color since we're just moving into spring, is to use a fan brush because it really dusts on nicely. And right now I am really loving Dune Bronze by Laura Mercier. Uh, it's a matte bronzer and it doesn't have a lot of shimmer to it, so it really goes on smoothly. And again, you're just gonna kinda tap it into the brush. I like to tap off the excess. And you can just add a little bit to your cheeks. Just dusting on softly, maybe a little bit on your forehead, under your chin to give a little bit of contouring, maybe down your nose, just kind of seeing where you like your bronzer to be, but it adds just a soft little bit of color and warmth to your face. Thanks so much for stopping by for my spring looks tutorial. You can visit my website, www.laurakelly.com for a full listing of all the products and also a pictorial. We'll see you next week.